Um, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you the director of the movie you just saw, Joshua Oppenheimer. So we're going to open this up to uh, questions from the audience, but I have uh, want to start things off first by uh, asking you a softball question, which is how did this whole project begin? Actually, we began making The Act of Killing in collaboration with a community of survivors of the 1965-66 genocide in a small plantation village about 60 miles from the city of Medan, where we made the movie. And when we started filming, the army found out, which is stationed in every village in Indonesia, found out that we were interested in what happened in 1965 and would no longer let the survivors participate in the film. We were really close to this community of survivors. We'd made a previous film with them, or helped them make a film about globalization and about their struggle to organize a union. And so we were living with them when we, and they had asked us to make a film about why they are afraid, about what it's like for them to live as survivors with the perpetrators still around them and in positions of power. When the army would, not, would no longer let them participate in the film, the army and the survivors said, you know, Josh, before you quit and give up, why don't you see if you can speak to the perpetrators, these aging death squad leaders who are living around us in this small village. They may tell you how our loved ones were killed. All we know is they were taken away and never came back. I approached these men cautiously at first, unsure if it was safe to ask questions about what happened in 1965. But to my horror and shock, every single one of them was immediately boastful and open, recounting grisly details of the killings, often in front of their wives, their children, even their grandchildren, and almost always with a smile on their faces. I took this material, well first I, I must say in this contrast between the survivors who were terrorized into silence, not allowed to tell their stories, and perpetrators who were boastfully recounting things far more incriminating than the survivors ever could have told me, I felt as though I had this sort of queasy feeling of having wandered into Germany 40 years after the Holocaust only to find the Nazis still in power. And I knew I would give as many years of my life as it would take to address this situation of impunity. I showed this early material with these village death squad leaders to the survivors who wanted to see it, not all of them wanted to, but those who did saw it, and to the broader Indonesian human rights community. Everybody who saw it said, Joshua, you're onto something terribly important. Keep filming the perpetrators because anyone who sees this will be forced finally to acknowledge the rotten heart of this regime. Make a film with this material and you will create something that comes to, the, it comes to Indonesia like the child in the emperor's new clothes pointing at this horrible reality that everyone knows exists but is too afraid to speak of and perhaps even too afraid to remember. This is, one of them said, I remember, this is like the sleeping tiger under the floorboards, the monster under the floorboards, something like that. I felt from that point on sort of entrusted by the survivors in the human rights community to do a work that they certainly could not safely do themselves, namely to approach the perpetrators.